Today we're going to talk about the arteries of the upper limb. Last time we talked about the brachial plexus. This time we're going to talk about the arteries. The thing is, it's just one artery and it changes its name through the course. And then it branches here into two branches, one for the ulna and one for the radius. So all the changes in the names of the main artery is just because of the region where the artery is found not because it's another artery or anything else. So it begins with the subclavian artery. So the subclavian artery goes like this, and then it passes behind the clavicle and goes into the axillary region. When it goes into the axillary region, so let's write this down, this is subclavian artery. And then it goes behind the clavicle, and then it goes into the axillary region. At this point, it's called the axillary artery. And then it leaves the axilla and goes into the brachial region, the, the arc, like this. So at that point, it becomes the brachial artery because it's in the brachial region. Then it goes into the forearm and it branches into two branches. We have them here the radial and the ulnar. So we have the ulnar artery, the radial artery. This is the main course of the arterial supply of the upper limb. Now, of course at, at each point or at each um, region, each artery will give some branches and collateral branches and so, so we're going to skim through that. I know the names are a lot and maybe they're a little bit confusing, but if we relate them to the regions when they are found, maybe I think it will be easier for you to memorize the names or to spot which branches the branch off, which artery and so on. So first of all the subclavian artery gives a branch, it's, it's called the suprascapular branch and it's called the suprascapular branch because it supplies the upper region of the scapula, so suprascapular branch. Here, suprascapular branch of the subclavian artery. And then the subclavian artery, as we mentioned, goes beyond the clavicle and becomes the axillary artery. At that point, uh, there is a muscle that divides the axillary artery into three regions. Picture out its mind. So we have our muscle here. This muscle is pectoralis minor. So pectoralis minor divides the axillary artery into three portions. We have the first portion which is behind the muscle, or not behind, uh, this one is behind the muscle. Let's say before the muscle, so it's called the uh, suprapectoral region. And the one behind the muscle, so the muscle covers it, is called the infrapectoral region. And this one after the muscle is called the retropectoral region. Most of the branches of the axillary artery emerge from that one, the suprapectoral region. For example, we have the supreme thoracic branch. Supreme thoracic branch. This branch emerges here and it gives two other branches. One of them is deep and one of them is superficial. The superficial one will asymose with the suprascapular branch and it will supply this upper part of the scapula, the uh, muscles found there, and the um, deep one will go, it will descend, and it will supply the, the muscles on the lateral side of the thorax. So we have serratus anterior, we have intercostal muscles, and so on. Also, the, the lateral thoracic artery, the lateral thoracic artery is the branch of the axillary artery, also from this region, 
and it also supplies the lateral muscles of the thorax. We have serratus, serratus anterior and the intercostal muscles. Another branch which goes um, in this course, we have the subscapular, not suprascapular, subscapular artery, subscapular artery, and also it gives two branches. One of them is called the circumflex um, subscapular artery. So it circumflex means that it, like it goes in a circle. So it rounds up and goes to the posterior side of the scapula, supply the muscles there. And it gives another branch which descends also in this area and supplies the lateral muscles of the thorax. So these are the branches from that region. From the retropectoral region, the region after the pectoralis minor, we have two branches and they form a circle around the surgical neck of the humerus. So we have a posterior circumflex artery and and anterior circumflex artery, so they form kind of a circle around the surgical neck of the humerus to participate in the formation of the arterial network at that point. I guess this is it for the axillary artery. Then we go to the next region, which is the brachial region, and the name changes into the brachial artery. What happens at that point? At that point, the brachial artery the brachial artery will give um, two branches or three branches one of them is deep and it will go like this it will go deep and it will go through the radial groove and it will supply the, the posterior compartment of the arc the other two branches, one of them is superior and one of them is inferior. Now we have to know at that point that the brachial artery is accompanied by the uh, median nerve and the median nerve begins uh, the course lateral to the artery and then it crosses and it becomes medial till it reaches the cubital fossa it goes through the bicipital groove accompanying the brachial artery with the two brachial veins and then after passing that the, the brachial artery will give its two branches the ulnar and the radial now this deep branch gives other branches we have a branch that uh, supplies the humerus itself, so a nutrient branch for the humerus. And we have uh, two other branches, with our, they are important. We have a medial collateral branch and we have a radial collateral branch. Medial and radial collateral branches. And from the names, we will see, one of them will anastomose with a branch from the ulnar artery because it's medial. And the other one will anastomose with a branch of the radial artery because from the name, obviously it will be on that side, on the radial side. So this is for the deep branch. These other two branches, the superior branch and the inferior branch, We'll also have to move with branches of the ulnar artery because they are on that side. And let's see, for the ulnar artery, it will give a branch, and this branch will um, branch into two collateral branches. Now, one of them will anastomose anteriorly with the inferior one, and the posterior one will anastomose behind the medial epicondyle of the humerus with the superior uh, branch of the brachial artery and this will form a network in the uh, area of the elbow so it will participate 
and the formation of the arterial network that supplies the elbow. This is the ulnar artery. The ulnar artery also gives another important branch which is the interosseous branch. Now the interosseous branch will give two branches. We have a posterior branch that goes immediately at that point, after the point of branching, it goes immediately to the posterior compartment of the forearm, supplies it, and goes through the forearm to participate in the formation of the dorsal carpal network, so at the dorsal side of the hand, this side. The other branch, as the other one is posterior, so this one will be anterior, and it will go through the uh, forearm till the point where the muscle, which is called pronator quadratus, is found. After this muscle, it will penetrate the interosseous membrane and go and anastomose with the posterior branch, and it will also uh, participate in the formation of the dorsal arterial network of the hand. Now, the posterior branch of the interosseous uh, artery will give a branch, the branch which will anastomose with the medial collateral branch of the deep branch of the brachial artery. And it makes sense because it's a branch of the ulnar artery and it's found on the medial side of the hand. So it will anastomose with the medial collateral branch of the deep brachial artery. And we have to say that the interosseous, um, the interosseous artery of the ulnar artery supplies the interosseous membrane that connects between the ulna and the radius. And after that, the ulnar artery will give branches that uh, form that will anastomose with uh, branches of the radial artery that um, form the dorsal and palmar carpal and uh, peripheral uh, arterial networks that supply the whole hand. Now the radial artery will directly give a branch called the radial recurrent radial recurrent branch and this one will anastomose with the radial collateral branch of the deep branch of the brachial artery so the network will be found medially and laterally like this so in order to supply the whole uh, area of the elbow or the cubital fossa this region and then afterwards as we said the radial artery will uh, give branches in order to uh, participate in the formation of the arterial network supply of the hand, of the palm, of the hand. So, I guess that's it for the arteries of the upper limb. I hope it was clear for you. If one of the names wasn't clear or anything, it's okay. But you have to go through it again. I hope it was uh, easy. And that's it for today. See you next time.